Welcome or welcome back to Brit Knits OKC. This is a knitting podcast. Um, sometimes I talk about other stuff like crochet or sewing or spinning. Um, but yeah, it's mostly all knitting all the time. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've recorded uh, last. I <laughs> We got family pictures taken today and I decided like six weeks ago, probably not even six weeks ago, uh, to that I could not finish the sweater that I was knitting because it was fingering weight, <laughs> or it is fingering weight. I'm still working on it. Um, so I dropped everything basically and knit this sweater and I finished it last night, <laughs> right on time. I had time to steam it this morning and um, we, my husband and I both wore sweaters that I knit. Um, his was one of the first garments that I, and really one of the first things I knit at all. Um, and then I finished this one yesterday. So, um, it's been a busy month, but not, um, super productive knitting wise besides this sweater. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is the Pig in Sky from Zanette Knits. It's Z-A-N-E-T-E, -E, Knits, on Ravelry and Instagram. Um, I will get a little bit closer so you can see. So sleeves. I'm gonna make sure that's the right one. Is that the nice one? Oh no, it isn't. It's the one I messed up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I added a couple inches to the bottom because I have a long body, uh, so I always have to add a little bit more. Um, one of the things that I really liked about this is I learned some new techniques. Uh, you do a provisional cast on, which I had never even thought about doing before, and it wasn't too hard. I It took me one night to knit the collar and then sew it down. Yeah, it was pretty easy with a video, obviously. <laughs> I learned all of all of the knitting from videos mostly. Uh, yeah, so I, I knit this in five weeks, I think. Yeah, five weeks and I used Brocco Vintage DK. Um, yeah, I don't really have that much to say about it. I, I love the color work. The color work chart was very easy. It was very easy to follow. There's a chart for every, well, not every, yeah, I think there's a chart for every different size. Um, I messed up a few things, <laughs> which I will go back and fix later. Um, one of them was I, was it in the body? Oh yeah, I messed up the short rows somehow. So I have like a little hole kind of like right here, but I, um, I, I sewed it together a bit 
And then I haven't quite mastered picking up sleeves. So I had to go in around here and do some loops, some loops surgery basically on both sides, um, front and back, the both corners right here, um, which was fine. I just need to more practice on that. Um, the ribbing, you, I don't even remember if it's in the pattern, but I did a tubular bind off just because I think it looks nicer. It has a nicer edge on it than just a regular ribbing. Uh, yeah. Oh, I met, this is what I was talking about when I was showing the sleeves. Um, I accidentally skipped a row here, somewhere in here. I skipped a row. It's supposed to be like open right there. <laughs> uh, that was not the worst mistake I made though. Um, I was so worried about getting the color chart done correctly that I forgot to do decreases. <laughs> I, for I didn't do any decreases in this section of the arm at all. Um, this is worked top down. And, you know, you split for the body and I got the body done and most of the ribbing on the bottom. And then I started on, well, I started on this sleeve. <laughs> started on this sleeve and was just like, yeah, this is going great because it's a lot faster than, than doing the color work repeats on the body. So <laughs> I, I was just like on a roll. I was on a mission. This is like maybe a week and a half ago, I finished the body part and then, yeah, then it was time for the sleeves and I messed up. <laughs> it's fine for now. Like I wore it today. I wore it in the pictures, um, the Christmas card pictures. I, you know, I'll probably wear it to work tomorrow because like sweater, <laughs> but um, I am going to go back in a couple months. Um, I don't know why I'm saying um so much. I think I, it's been a while since I recorded, so I'm a little weird right now. Uh, but I I like the way it looks and I like, you know, I, I modified it. So since the sleeves weren't, since I did no decreases, <laughs> um, I started doing decreases here. So I just did like every eight rows. I did a no six rows. That's a different pattern. Um, every six rows I did decreases and they're just like in the, at the beginning of the row. I don't know if you can see them on here. They're right here. Um, and then since this was a little bit wider, I length, I added, I think I added one more decrease row. I don't remember exactly, but I wanted them to be longer. Since they were wider, I wanted them to be a little bit longer and more like boxy. Um, yeah, more of like a relaxed look, but I am <laughs> mostly since, okay, this is the first sleeve I did. This was the second sleeve I did. I did the second sleeve perfectly and I did it in like three days, I think, which is a lot because I was working full time in the office. Um, so I did all of this in two or three days and I didn't mess up anything. <laughs> like this looks great. It's all nice. Uh, and then I, when I was like done with the color work here, I was like comparing them and I said, oh, no. <laughs> and then I saw that. Um, yeah, so I messed it up, but it's fine. Mostly no one can find it except knitters. <laughs> so I'm going to wear it for a while. And after the holidays and after um, I get a few other things done, um, I'm going to come back and undo all the sleeves <laughs> and redo them with the decreases in here the correct way. That way it fits a little bit more like it's supposed to. Not better because I, I actually really like the relaxed kind of fit of the sleeves, but um, I just messed that up. I, I can't leave that. 
Like if it was, if it was just that I forgot to do the decreases, I would just leave it how it is. But that is going to bother me. <laughs> That's going to bother me a lot. Uh, yeah. So, um, the Barocco Vintage is, I think it has some acrylic in it. I have some back here. Ooh, where are you? Here we go. I think I bought extra because I, I always buy at least one skein extra of the main color or I make sure I have a lot extra of color work. I mean, I've only done one other color work thing, but I always get extra yarn because my body is long and I always have to add two or three inches to the bottom of everything. That way it fits comfortably. I did leave this a little bit more cropped than I usually would, but it's still, it's still like my hips, where's my hip, like right here. So I think it's, I think it's all right. Um, and I'm wearing that high-waisted pants now, like all the, all the kids. <laughs> They're probably not even doing that anymore. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I'm old. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Barocco Vintage DK. Yeah, it is. It's 52% acrylic, 40% wool, 8% nylon. So I think technically I could put this in the dryer, but that's not happening. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, and I was kind of scared that the color work, because it's this, I don't even remember. I don't have the name of it. I know that this one is oats. And I think this is like berries or something, something like that, either berries or wine or burgundy, some kind of color like that. It's, it's a really deep purpley red color. Um, I was afraid that if I wet blocked it, which I usually wet block all of my knits, uh, I was really scared though that it would bleed. And I even bought color catchers uh, because I was like, oh yeah, I know about color catchers. It'll be fine. And then the closer I got to it, the more I was like, I don't even want to wash this before the pictures, <laughs> but I'm really glad that I had a steam blocker or not a steam blocker, a steam, a steamer, a garment steamer. Uh, so I just steamed it and I was absolutely mesmerized while I was steaming it because the color work you know, when you're knitting stuff, it's kind of like bunched up. And, you know, I knew that my floats were long enough, but I wasn't sure uh, if it would actually go flat. <laughs> and it did. And it really just all relaxed together perfectly. I didn't have to pull on anything. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I really love the design on this. And I think I want to make like a really dark gray one, either like really dark charcoal gray or black with some yellow for the color work. A like deep goldenrod kind of yellow though. I think that would look really cool. Um, so I will probably make this sweater again, hopefully without the mistakes. <laughs> but I was, I was really rushing and yeah, I just, I just couldn't, I didn't have time to go back. So yeah. <laughs> so that's the Pagan Sky sweater by Zanette Knits. Um, was my marathon knit, <laughs> my crazy idea <laughs> that I had last minute. Luckily, one of the yarn, one of the local yarn shops carries Barocco Vintage and I knew that it was kind of a safe bet and I knew what, what I was going to get from it basically. So, um, that's why I just ran over there and I told my husband, I was like, I have to go to the urine store because here's the deal. This fingering white sweater is not going to be done in time. I mean, I knit for an hour or so and I only, it only moved like that much from the armpits. I was like, this is not gonna be done in time. It's just not, I love it and it's beautiful and I'm still working on it, but it's not gonna be done. And it, would, it wouldn't have been done by today. There's no way. I'll show that one. Um, this is the Pink Fizz by Andrea Mowry. 
Um, I guess we're moving into whips now. <laughs> so this is, is that the, yeah. This is the Pink Fizz. It's green though. Green Fizz. <laughs> um, but the pattern is Pink Fizz by Andrew Mowry. I am a little bit past, you know, I've, I've done like that much, I think, since. I knit four or five rows on this this morning just because I was finally done on this one. Um, so this is the first color work yoke that I knit. And I think that this part, I'm a little bit worried about the top of it, like this little motif right here. It's really bumpy and I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's gonna block out well, but we'll see. I'm not gonna redo it. <laughs> I'm not gonna redo it. I'm just, ah, no. It's fingering weight and um, yeah, it's not a quick knit for me. It's not a quick knit for me. I am not contrary to what it might look like. I'm not a, that quick of a knitter. <laughs> I just don't do a lot else. So yeah, I'm, I've been working on this. I'm hoping to make a little bit more headway on this especially once I get all of the gift knitting out of the way that I have for the next few weeks. I have a cowl that I'll show you in a second and I'm working on some socks still, which some of those might turn into hats because I don't know if I'm a sock knitter. <laughs> I just don't know if I'm a sock knitter. Um, I get to a certain point, I'll show you. <laughs> Um, I didn't write down the pattern. I borrowed a chart, not borrowed, it's free, on Ravelry for some Star Wars stuff. And I think I used three charts actually, not just for this one, um, but it's free on Ravelry. I will, I'll look it up and I'll put it down in the thing below. Um, so I get, I, I turn the heel. I did the whole top part, color work. <laughs> color work seems to be my theme recently. So I did these like stormtrooper guys. And then um, did the heel flap, turned the heel, and then I just like stalled out, <laughs> which that's the theme. I do the top, get to the heel, and I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> which I don't find them that difficult. That's not the thing. I do have to do like all of it in one in one go. So the heel, I need to do all of the heel flap and then like do the picking up things and all of that and turn the heel like the same night. Otherwise, I'll just look at them and make noises. <laughs> like, oh, I don't wanna do that. That seems like a lot of work, which it's fine. I did it, I turned the heel, it's all good. But now I just need to finish this one and do the other one. It's mate. <laughs> we'll see. And then I'm supposed to do like four more pairs of socks. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> That's why they might turn into hats. Um, I'm using Cascade sock yarn for that. For those, I got a bunch of different colors of the Cascade sock yarn. Um, where are they? Oh, that's what this is right here. Half of it, half of it is. Uh, yeah. So the other thing, and this is the next deadline that I have to meet, you know, besides the maybe Christmas, maybe not Christmas socks. <laughs> I have another deadline for a gift. And I'm excited about this one. And I did, I actually have been, I have, focusing issues when it comes to knitting. I just want to knit all the things and I don't have enough time. So every once in a while I take a break and I switch to something else. <clears throat> this is also, I think, an Andrew Mowry pattern. I didn't write it down, but it's, hold on. I have it on Ravelry. <laughs> Let's see, projects, projects too many projects. Uh, yeah, this is the Full Circle Cowl by Andrew Mowry. Um, woo, I'm dropping everything. 
yeah, it has, I don't know if you can see it. That's the problem. I used this colored yarn. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's just a cable repeat pattern. I think I'm on the third repeat. Yeah, um, I'm using a yarn called Scotland in a DK weight. I think it's DK and that's from a chick that knits. It's a, one of our local yarn stores here and she is a yarn dyer and makes some really beautiful colors. So I'm using that. I thought the Scotland is just so pretty. So pretty. I think I'll eventually make like a, a really simple sweater with the Scotland colorway at some point. It's just so pretty. Yeah, so I have to finish that one soon. Oh look, it had the, I don't want to show everything, but it had the name of the pattern on the thing. Who knew? <laughs> I am with it today, guys. So with it. Um, and then I've also been working on, actually this project distracted me from this one for like two weekends. And when I should have been working on this, I was working on this other thing. <laughs> I think I've shown, I think I've shown this before. Um, this is also an Andrea Mallory pattern. Um, I just love her stuff. Her stuff is kind of my style. So I bought a lot of her patterns recently and I really just like her aesthetic. So this is the Douglas Cardi and mine is autumn colors so I'm in the middle of a row so there's the yeah I'm in the middle of a row and this is knit with a 316 dye studio in Wichita Kansas it's knit with her DK tweed yarn um see if I remember the colors this is birch so that is birch and then this one is cranberry and this one is rust and this one is spruce um this is the same color that um the main part of the body of my pink fizz i think it's pink fizz or is it pink oh no i'll i'll look it up and i'll put it down below <laughs> Yeah, any information about the patterns I talk about or designers or anything like that, there should be links down below. Sometimes my husband posts the video before I can get to the links, like putting all the links in, but um, usually within a couple days, I get that updated. <laughs> uh, so this one is spruce and that's the same color. And on the other, whichever one that is, <laughs> um, the light green is called olive. And it's those, those are also from 316. And then I think this one is called Goldenrod. I don't, that sounds wrong now. I don't remember. I think I took all, yeah, I took all the ball bands out of there too. So yeah, beautiful. I'm so obsessed with this. I, I want to work on this all the time now. Like I kind of want to do with this one what I did with this one and just work on it constantly so I can get it done and wear it, wear it to work. Yeah, it's going to be so cozy. <laughs> and I also bought buttons for it. So I didn't even think about buttons for a while. And to be fair, I am far from putting buttons on it, <laughs> but I bought some buttons on Etsy. I bought them from Button Jones. So it's just Button Jones, all one word, um, on Etsy. And they had tons of, of options. So many options. Um, but I wanted some kind of leaf thing since it's like super autumn Tweety cardigan. So I got these Sycamore. Oh, let me take them out of the package. I forgot about the glare. 
I'll get a couple of them out of here. Yeah, I got these to put on there. They're sycamore buttons. I am obsessed with them. And then on the back, they have a little, a little loop. Yeah. So that's what those look like. I'm very excited. Uh, they're slightly too big. Well, they were listed as like a quarter bigger than what the pattern calls for, but they're shapes. <laughs> they're like in a regular shape. So I think I can make them work. And if I can't make them work, how often am I tripping over my words? How often am I really going to button up a cardigan anyway? Probably never. So even if they don't fit through the buttonholes, I'm still putting them on there. <laughs> I'm very, I'm so excited about that cardigan. It's the first cardigan I've ever tried to knit. Um, I think I did something new on that pat on that pattern too. I think there was some skill that I didn't know. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember what it is now though. <laughs> yeah, those are the whips I'm going to be working on the next few weeks. Hopefully I will finish the cowl. Um, I mean, I have to, I have to finish the cowl soon and I really need to work on those socks like a lot. There's another pair right in there, I think. Yeah, that are half done. <laughs> I think I have like one and a half of one of those though. Um, yeah, fun times. So, uh, too much knitting, not enough time, basically. <laughs> um, the story of my life. So I also, I did some fun things the past few weeks. Um, I did a Zoom knit along night for the 316 Cozy Cal that I'm doing with the 316 Dye Studio. That's what the Douglas Cardi is. And we had a Zoom meetup and it was really fun. They had another one Friday night, but um, this last Friday, but I had a work, a work thing. So I went to that um, just because I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to know my coworkers a little bit more. So it was fun, <laughs> but I'm sad that I missed the the second Zoom meetup because everyone in there was so nice and we had a great time. Um, yeah. And I also went to an alpaca festival. <laughs> Hold on. I took a screenshot so I could remember the name because it's a really long name. Yeah, it was the 2021 alpaca blast off and holiday shopping extravaganza <laughs> it was here in oklahoma it was uh, a little bit outside of the city but it was at a fair uh, county fairgrounds and there were lots of alpacas there um hopefully i will see if daniel my husband will um put some video either at the beginning or at the end of this because i took some some video of the alpacas, some of which were naughty alpacas. <laughs> One of them was like sticking his head through the gate and eating another pen's food. It was hilarious. <laughs> My friends and I were all like giggling and we had a great time like petting the alpacas and just learning about them and they were extremely cute. But I also bought some yarn while I was there. <laughs> I got two kinds of yarn. Well, I got yarn from two places. They all have alpaca fur, alpaca fur, alpaca hair in them. Um, the first one I got was from a local alpaca place. Um, yeah, it's from Just Right Alpacas in Jones, Oklahoma, which is like half an hour outside the city. Um, yeah. So I, I saw this and as you can see, 
I buy boring colors mostly. <laughs> um, I'm really into like jewel tones and then light, light co colors. Um, but I saw this and I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about it. <laughs> they had a few booths at this festival and there was so much nice yarn and so much um, like handmade things. There was this one stall that was selling bags and these like tapestries. They were so beautiful. Um, yeah, so, but the whole time I had walked by, we talked to these people and um, we looked at their yarn and asked some questions and stuff like that. And then I couldn't decide if I definitely wanted to buy it or not, but I did, I bought it. Uh, and it's 100% alpaca, three ply, three ply sport, hand dyed yarn, and the color is called Opening Night. And it's so pretty, <laughs> it's so pretty. I just can't get over. It looks like an Oklahoma sunset. And I know that that sounds like a cliche, but we really do have pretty sunsets here. It's got some like purpley gray in it and teal some orange, oh, this like really pretty like corally color. I'm obsessed with this. Um, my first thought was to make a scarf as a gift for somebody. I have a specific person in mind, but I'm not going to spoil it because they I don't know if they'll watch this. Um, but yeah, I plan on making a scarf out of this and I don't know, maybe I'll just do, um, what is it when you knit all the rows and it's real squishy? It's the opposite, not the opposite of stocking it, but um, yeah, I might just do that. I might do a really plain one or I don't know. I'll have to look up patterns. If you guys have an idea of a scarf pattern that takes 400 yards of sport weight yarn, let me know. I could always like mix it with something else too, if that's not enough yardage. But it's just so pretty, so beautiful. I love it. So I'm very excited about that, obviously. And it's so soft. Like, I wish you could feel this. <laughs> it's so squishy, so good. So I got that and then you might notice the theme, burgundy burgundy purpley color <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, I really like this color um I have a lot of clothes that are purpley and burgundy colors so I saw this yarn and I could not leave it this is from Winterstrom Ranch in Texas uh it doesn't say where in Texas but they're in Texas you can look them up at Winterstrom not storm, strum, winterstromranch.com. And I will link that below also. Yeah, and this is Alpaca Sport as well. And there's 220 yards per skein. I got three skeins. I think I might make, I might see if I can make a shirt, like a short sleeve shirt with it. I don't know if I have enough yards though, but it's so, it's so pretty. Yeah. So I have 660 yards of this. So hopefully I can make a shirt out of it. And hopefully I'm not allergic to alpaca. Um, I am allergic to most animals, <laughs> not sheep. Not so far anyway. <laughs> um, not sheep. I think I'm allergic to like pet dander. So most dogs I'm allergic to, most cats. Yeah. But they're one of the, I don't know if he was in charge of the barn, like the barn manager or something. He was telling us that alpaca are hypoallergenic animal, like hypoallergenic. Yeah, most people are not allergic to alpaca, so we'll give it a try. 
I'll see. I'll see if I am. My husband is a little bit sensitive on his neck to wool. And he actually wore, I told you that already, he, are, he wore a sweater that I knit for him. And it was made with wool of the Andes. I think it's a little bit itchy. He got itchy like on his neck and then like on his forearm, you know, like the sensitive part of your arm. Um, yeah. So I, th I think next time I won't make his 100% wool. I think I'll find some kind of blend or um, maybe I'll do linen. He's always hot too. So me making him a sweater was kind of hilarious. Uh, Cause it can be near freezing outside and he's like, eh, maybe I'll take a hoodie. <laughs> Whereas I don't mind the cold, but I like to be cozy. Yeah. I also, um, a chick that knits had a birthday celebration, I think. And they had a sale. So I needed to buy, I'll grab it. I needed one more mohair skein. I think I talked about this before. This is a, it's not mohair actually. This is Surrey Silk Cloud. This is alpaca. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, this is a alpaca silk. 74% baby Surrey alpaca, 26% mulberry silk. So I needed another one of these because I'm either, I'm going to use it with, ooh, what color? I'm gonna use it with Blossom, which I'm in love with. I'm obsessed with this color. Or, this uh, Lavender Fields. I'm either, I'm gonna put it with this or the other one. I'll have to do a little swatch and see what it looks like. Yeah. So I, I, I needed one of these. And then I was like, well, I don't really need anything else right now, but I didn't only want to buy one thing. So I also got, does it have a colorway? Yes, I got these mini sock skeins in charcoal. So it's this like grayish, bluish color. They're coming out a little bit lighter on the camera, but um, I got these and I figured I could use them for some color work sometime. So that's fun. This is the first mini sock skeins that I've ever got. Yeah, so I got that. And then I got very excited because I was on Instagram, scrolling through knit Knitstagram. <laughs> and um getting myself in trouble basically uh so actually i was watching youtube that was a lie this was not instagram's fault it was youtube's fault <laughs> um i was on youtube watching melody hoffman so melody hoffman puts out these really lovely like highly produced but in a in a nice way blog like vlogs and they're gorgeous they all have like gorgeous lighting and she everything in her house looks like a tableau it's just like beautiful <laughs> and I I don't even knit while I watch those I usually knit while I watch other podcasts but with melodies I just am memor mesmerized by it so I watched one of her latest vlogs and she has a new sweater out called Wild Posy. Let me make sure there's nothing sticking to this. Uh, oh, that light's gonna come on here. Go back. Yeah, I don't know. There we go. You can kind of see. And one of them has these little yarn overs with the little, it puts the little holes. And then the other one, so that it comes as one, one pattern, well, two patterns, one set together. You get both. 
So you can do, I think Flora is the one that has the little yarn over section. And then um, Luna, I think, doesn't have that on it. Let me see if... Mm. Yeah, you can kind of see. That one's Luna, I think. And it doesn't have the little holes in it. I'm gonna have to decide which one, which one I wanna do. <laughs> so I'm going to knit this sweater soon too. I have moved it past almost everything in my queue. I have a big queue, really long queue. I have um, multiple sweater quantities of yarn that are already spoken for because my queue just keeps getting longer and I'm like, oh, I have to knit that soon. So I need the yarn for it. And then I have to knit this other thing first though. <laughs> so I need the yarn for that. Um, I'm sure everyone has this problem, but yeah. I've been wanting to try out uh, Plotulopi by Istex. It's a Scandinavian yarn. It's an Icelandic yarn from Iceland and it's, I don't know if you'll be able to see, yeah. I got the light ash gray colorway and I got six plates. These are called plates because it's unspun yarn and I haven't opened them yet just because I'm waiting until I start the sweater. But you can kind of see it's unspun and it, it breaks apart really easily, but then you can rub it together and it goes back to normal. Um, so I've been both really wanting to try this and really scared too. So I don't know what's gonna happen. We'll see. It'll be an adventure. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited about that. Um, I think I need to make a rule for myself that I need to finish the Douglas Cardi before I start the Wild Posy. Flora or Luna. I don't know which one yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and then, um, while I was shopping on, I got that from webs. I think they had some kind of deal on Plotulopi. I looked at like three websites and I was going to order. So I was going to order a sweaters quantity of Plotulopi. And then it's pretty cheap, like not cheap as in like cheap, but like it's fairly, it's fairly affordable. One plate, let me see. One plate is 100% wool, 100, there's 100 grams, 300 meters, 328 yards in each plate of Plotulopi. And it was only about ten dollars for a plate which seems pretty reasonable to me and I I only needed six plates or I only needed five plates and I bought six just because of the extra length so yeah so I was going to buy a whole other sweater quantity in um they have this really beautiful like golden mustardy excuse me mustardy yellow color so I was going to buy that, but <laughs> none of the websites had both things that I wanted or either that or they didn't have the color that I wanted. So Melody used, hmm, what color? She used the ivory beige and I, I thought that was really pretty, but no one had enough of them. So I got the light ash gray and then I wanted, I really wanted that mustardy color one. But I guess this is probably better because I can see if I like it. I have a friend who absolutely hates unspun yarn. She was like, oh, that stuff, it's terrible. Um, but I, I'm willing to give it a try just to see if I like it. And then I bought these Neutral Stitch Stoppers by Coco Knits. Well, they're stitch stoppers in the neutral color. Color, yeah. Yeah, they're these little, I guess you pop the little, I haven't even tried these yet. 
they, you pop out that little middle part and they go on the end of your needles. So yeah, I'm gonna try these out. They're very squishy. <laughs> they seem like they'll be good. Um, and I've kind of been really wanting some, some either needle covers or stitch stoppers or, you know, something to put on the ends of my needles, especially the metal ones, because I bought a couple, um, that's my last acquisition. Um, I bought another Hohe Logatelli bag, Hohe & Co. Um, her bags are just, they're really beautiful. They're really well made. Um, I'm obsessed with them. Every time she has a new one come out, I'm just like, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> So I bought another one. I bought, um, so everyone's been talking about Stephen West shawlography and MCALs kind of scare me. Well, mist, yeah, mystery knit along scare me. I kind of need to know what I'm going to end up with. Uh, I know that's not very fun, but I, I kind of need to know. Uh, I'm very picky about like colors and uh, what something's going to look like at the end. So I did not participate in that. Um, I might someday. We'll see. But I get how I get how he's emails <laughs> and I shouldn't. Um, I get how he's emails and I bought this, sh this shawlography bag. It's a shawl bag. And it's by Hohe & Co. with West Knits, which is Stephen West's knitting brand. And it has, it's leather. So these, these, this is a dark green panel and a light green panel. And it has these really nice leather straps. And then the sides are that um, waxed suede, I think. I think it's waxed suede. Yeah. It's beautiful and it's like the perfect size for a sweater. <laughs> I had this sweater in it the last couple weeks and um, it has a little pouch in here too. So you can put your stuff in there. And I actually really like that it's open because I have to go through security at work. So I don't wanna be, <laughs> I knit during my lunch and I don't wanna be like having to open up I have a ball, which is also by Hohe Locatelli, Hohe & Co. I have this ball, but it has so many, like I would have to undo this and then undo these straps. I, I just, I love this bag, but I can't take it back and forth to work. It would just take too long and I don't want to hold up the line going through security. So, uh, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I love that it's open and it doesn't, it has a, a flat bottom so it doesn't fall over. I just love it so much. This is my favorite bag. I kind of wish I would have bought two of them. Um, I probably will get another one at some point. Not super soon because I've been buying too many. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is basically all I have. Yeah, I really need to finish all my holiday knitting and um, I really want to finish my Douglas cardigan and I finished the sweater. <laughs> I'm very excited because this is, I, I knit one sweater, well, I knit a shirt for myself and it doesn't fit very well. Um, not because of me or the pattern, well, it is because of me. Um, because in lockdown I gained some weight and the sweater is just kind of like, it fits, but it's a little bit uncomfortable, like on my stomach. So I don't wear it right now. Um, and then I found out I knit that shirt and then my husband's sweater that he wore today. And I found out that I was twisting my knit stitches. So the fabric is a little bit stiff. Um... I feel bad because that's the only thing that I've done for my husband so far. But 
he wears it and he likes it so I don't know but it, it is a little bit more stiff fabric and um after that I knit this really pretty mohair sweater and it's just too big I don't know if I pick the wrong size I think I picked the wrong size um I think that part of my problem is I go by because most of the sweaters you go by the bust measurements and that's where I gained some of the weight over lockdown and the rest of me did not gain proportionally so I gained a lot of weight in my thighs and in my chest and um not really anywhere else I mean I did a little bit but not to the extent so um I this was fine because once you got here it was square and you just knit straight and the green sweater that I'm knitting the I should, I should look that up actually it's the pink velvet not the pink fizz <laughs> I also have the pink fizz pattern um yeah but it's the pink velvet sweater um but I'm knitting a green one uh that one yeah that one I think is going to be fine because it's square down but if there's any kind of shaping involved or if there's a lot of ease this part fits but then the bottom is just huge on me if it doesn't fit the way that it's supposed to or that I want it to and um I have to find like a happy medium I have to be really careful about um what size I'm doing with the cardigan I think I did the size that it said according to my measurements, but um, I don't mind if that's a little bit oversized. So yeah. Yeah, that's all I really have planned over the next few weeks. Uh, we're gonna have my mom over for Thanksgiving and I think we're just gonna make lamb and some potatoes and just have kind of like a chill out, chill out day because I also have to work on Friday, so. Yeah, and I, I mean, I will, I don't know when I'm going to be back because of the holidays, but I'm sure I will have some more things to talk about in a few weeks. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for um, bearing with me and all of my ums today. And uh, I really hope you all have a good holiday if you're having a holiday or a good week uh, if you're not having a holiday. And um, stay safe, wear your mask, happy knitting, bye.